burn. Yeah, there are certain portions of a tornado, much like you'd think on a larger scale, that uh, have that circulation, but there are stronger vortices within that tornado that can inflict significantly more damage and leave other buildings relatively unharmed. Now, we are very certain we've confirmed likely several tornadoes in our area tonight, but the real investigation goes to work tomorrow as the National Weather Service will be out surveying many areas in northwest Ohio and a couple areas up into southern Michigan. All the storms are out of the picture, and there it was. If you look real quick, that was the storm system that came out of southern Michigan right along the lake shore, and it was a large supercell that was producing massive hail across the area. Uh, as much as tennis ball size hail, and perhaps even a few indications we could have been up to baseball size hail. Flash flooding still a little bit of a risk tonight. We had three to five inches of rain across Erie and Huron County, in addition to the wind damage and the uh, large hail that we had reported. And there it is, a little bit slower version came right across the lake shore. And I do suspect uh, perhaps it was a lake breeze that enhanced a little bit of that spin that was occurring across our lakeshore communities uh, that created the rotation with that storm system. We had significant damage. Uh, we've got reports of damage up there towards Stony Point and as well uh, confirming that tornado here in the Toledo Metro uh, based on the video and pictures and a very large hail as well. Let's talk more about the actual reports that have been rolling in. Let's send it over to meteorologist Matt Willoughby and Matt. Uh, the tornadoes likely to be multiple confirmed in the area. Let's start where it all began earlier this evening. Yeah, Chris, it pretty much all began up into at least Detroit breach. That's where we saw our first tornado warning, and that was just the start of it where we saw widespread reports of trees and power lines down. Now, the second report that we looked at, we're talking tennis size, uh, tennis ball size hail, and that's about two and a half inches of uh, hail, pretty much the, almost the size of your hand, almost. And of course, we did see multiple ports of trees down all the way into this area, even into Sandusky. I saw numerous trees down, and of course, that's the same case uh, close to Bellevue, where we did see, in fact, tons of trees down into that area. And of course, the system that we did see kind of creep up on us a little bit from uh, at least the west was we saw uh, some hail as well, just around an inch around the Tiffin area. So taking a wider look at all this, you can definitely tell with those storm reports where this track was, uh, and it pretty much went throughout our entire viewing area. And of course, that's where we see a tons of those uh, storm reports. So of course, Chris, this is where at least we start to pick up the pieces as we go throughout the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and when it comes to tornado or not, Matt, many areas, whether it was wind damage or a tornado, still going to have to deal with the damage by tomorrow morning. It's the Official crews, though, they're going to be out tomorrow, and especially those areas that you highlighted east of I-75, uh, from uh, Bellevue to Sandusky over to Port Clinton, Oak Harbor. There's going to be some confirmation, very likely, of tornadoes in those areas as well. Yeah, of course, especially with the damage that we see, did see with those videos and the pictures. Uh, definitely going to see uh, how uh, the NWS does, in fact, survey this and uh, could tell what, uh, how uh, severe this uh, tornado, in fact, was. And Matt, we are all looking forward to some quieter weather, and I've got that in my hour by hour our forecast. Appreciate that update from meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Quiet conditions ensue tonight. A little bit of cloud cover that works over the area, and here's what you wake up to tomorrow morning. It will be a mainly cloudy start to the day. Perhaps a sprinkle or two east of I-75 off the Lake Erie shores. We will have dry conditions into the afternoon. Highs in the mid to upper 70s, and some sunshine will return late in the day. So overall, partly sunny skies. It will be dry, a bit breezy at times. Upper 70s going to be expected, and your 10-day forecast, breezy conditions on Friday. Lower 80s Saturday. Sun Monday in the mid 80s and early next week, we're looking at dry, quiet conditions Monday and Tuesday, right around the low 80s and a few rain showers Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, but not expecting anything severe over the next 10 days after we got quite the pop of storms into our area this evening. Another thing that I just is so remarkable to me, a, a woman 93 years old, she was out picking up big hail and then bigger hail she wanted to put in her freezer and then oh. another man who was working in the yard and said he just looked up and saw it swirling so I guess I don't know how to ask this question but it just seemed so quick obviously right. tornadoes are but for these people to just be out kind of doing their business and and when, not without warning there was a tornado warning kind of a word to you know the wise always be prepared for something like this when we were on coverage we said have your emergency kit in your basement you never know when you're going to find yourself seeking shelter like that and i do suspect that some of the breeze that we had over towards the lake could have uh, enhanced some of that rotation which made this an unusual circumstance we'll be right back with much